Hi guys, this is Ryan and this is SOLIDWORKS Tutorials with Ryan. So if you want to learn this software right, I am your go-to guy. This is how SOLIDWORKS should be taught. Now, I was looking at SOLIDWORKS Model Mania two days ago and I came across their 2020 model, which seemed easy enough. So I thought to myself, what's so special about this part? So I started looking for the drawing of that model and I found it, it has two different phases and I started to model it and I then realized, oh, the way they have described the model in its 2D drawing comes across a little bit tricky for me. So I thought to myself, if it's tricky for me, how difficult should it be for someone who considers the themselves beginners in SOLIDWORKS. So I thought, okay, so why not share my knowledge with these people and tell them how to model something that tricky. All right, before we start this video, there are a couple of things you should know about this model. First of all, it comes in two different phases and the drawing for both phases is available and I'm going to put the download link in the description below and it's free. And lastly, I have an important announcement that I'm sure you really like at the end of this video. So make sure to stick around for the announcement at the end of this video. It's about a course that we are releasing. I think I gave it away. Okay, fellas, this is the model that we are going to create and it is in its phase one. And in phase two, it looks something like this. But back to the phase one, it looks simple enough. Now let me show you the drawing for it. This is the drawing for phase one or part one as I named it. When we approach a drawing like this, we shouldn't get overwhelmed by all the details. We usually have to ignore all the details that we see and look for the base geometry. If I pay attention to this drawing, this one wouldn't help me much to start the drawing. It gives me an idea how the part looks like from this angle or the cross-sectional view helps me of course but this is what we need we need an outer geometry which i call it a base geometry something that is fundamental in the modeling of our component so this is something i'm going to start with and draw it will be a cylinder an outer edge inner edge two circle in the middle and one over here which represents the very outer line over here and then we will try to connect these two together and multiply it using a circular pattern so let's just do that Let's start off by drawing on the top plane, two circles in the middle. We still do not work with any dimension and one circle here. That's enough for now. So let's just see some dimensions. The outer circle over here has a diameter of 22 and the inner one 16. Over here, the diameter for this outer edge, the radius is six, so the diameter is 12. So let's just do that. This is 12 and this is 22 and this is 16. I love how accurate I draw. Next, this is still underdefined, so I can pick its center, hold the control key down, as well as the origin point, then make him go horizontal, then the distance between them. Look, it hasn't given us any distance. However, we have a guide circle with a diameter of 70. So let's just do that. We have a circle, set it for construction, and the diameter for that should be 70. Now we can drag this point and drop it on the circle, then it will be fully defined. Next, I'm gonna connect the center of these two circles together using another center line. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line tangential to the circle, leave one there, go back, use mirror entities and mirror it about this line like this. Dimensions, again, the angle between these two lines is 22. So let's just assign that, 22 like this. All right, so I do not see any other dimension here except this radius for the fillet over here, here, and here with a radius of 22, which we cannot create yet. So we have to go back. After this, I'm gonna get rid of this excess material, the entity of the circle on the inner side. So we go to trim entities, check keep trim entities as construction geometry because we don't wanna switch back to being underdefined. So whenever I cut or trim an entity, it will stay there as a construction geometry. So it does not interfere with what we want to do, but the sketch stays in the fully defined state anyway. So that's an advantage of checking that box. Now I'm going to go and use a circular sketch pattern, entities to pattern, obviously these two lines plus this one. I'm going to repeat them three times and click OK. Now the sketch is not fully defined again, but don't worry, sometimes you have to just drag that point onto the circle or assign the angle between them. Just play with it and find out what it is that is causing the sketch to go 
underdefined. For example, now we are back to being fully defined again. Use term entities again, because you can also extend entities using this feature in case you didn't know. I'm going to extend them like this. It went back to being underdefined. Why? Because that point, at that point, we're in a symmetrical relation according to the center line with each other. And when I extend one of them, I broke that rule. So I'm going to have to apply it again, see if that works. It worked. We are back to being fully defined. Now, to finish it off, we have to apply this radius of 22 that I told you about. Pick it up, sketch, fill it, set it to 22, and pick these lines. Select the rest. Yes. And OK. Again, back to being underdefined. Let's see what the problem is. OK, the problem is I just select these two, make them go vertical, see if that helps the problem. It does. Now, this is the base geometry which we can rebuild. Now that we have this sketch, we need to know how much to extrude this part for. So looking at this section AA, the cross-sectional view, which cuts the part from here to here, by the way, we see that the cylinder in the middle of the part is extruded for 22. On top of that, we see the angle of this slope over here, according to this vertical line in the middle, is 112 degrees. There is one, there is two, and there is a third piece of information. The height of this last point over here is six. So let's just apply those and see what we can do. First, I'm going to go to features tab, pick extruded boss and pick our cylinder. Doesn't matter. I will pick the edge, but since it is not what I want to extrude, I will select that edge on the selected counters and press delete on the keyboard. And now I only select the area bounded between these two circles and extrude it for 22. Click OK. Now, once you click OK, the sketch, the whole sketch will be disappeared because we just used it once to create a 3D geometry out of that. However, we can bring it back. You just open the feature you use on top of that sketch, click on that sketch and click on show. Now that sketch is still there and we can reuse it for further steps. Next, I'm going to draw a line on the front plane. So let's just make it normal to the screen, a center line that goes up all the way, goes here, and goes down, something like this. All right, first thing first, the angle between this vertical line and this incline line should be 112 degrees. The height over here was six, so leave it at that. Next, we're gonna pick this point, hold the control key down and pick this edge of the circle on the base sketch and pierce them together. Now this center line is fully defined because we have an angle set here, we have a height here, and this distance is obviously fixed because this is pierced, so it's fully defined. I'm gonna select this center line in the middle now, change it back to line. We don't want it for construction anymore. We can go to the surfaces tab, pick revolved surfaces, pick the center line, and create a surface using this line. So you might ask yourself why a piece of surface is there. We are going to use this as a reference for our next extrusion because we can, as I said, pick the sketch that we had and extrude it once again. You can extrude in a sketch unlimited amount of times. And this time I'm going to change direction one from blind to up to surface. Now I can pick the surface and right click OK. Look, whenever you move your mouse cursor on a body or surface body and press tab on the keyboard, you can hide it. Look how it looks. It looks pretty much OK now. I can't hide this sketch anymore. I don't need it. And we are almost done with phase one, except for these holes that we have over here. These are M4 holes, which are four millimeters thick from the bottom of this component. So we can create it easy using hole wizard. We go here, we need to work with counterbore and symmetric. I have it set all here, M4, and we go back to positions. We select the surface and I just make it normal to it's easier. Place one here, here, and here. Now we can click OK. This is still not finished because I said this thickness over here should be four. So let's just adjust our drawing a little bit. Open this, edit the sketch for that. We don't need this dimension. You can delete it. You can assign a new one here set it to four. See what I did? It was on default defining the depth of the headboard, but I changed it to this entity over here. I deleted this one, placed the new one here. It is still fully defined. So rebuild it. There you go. Lastly, we have these red fillets that are with a radius of one. Easy to do. Just select that edge, apply a radius of one. This is just as well. 
in case you want to make sure you made the part the right way go to the evaluate tab and measure the mass properties see if you get the same mass as i do 23.8 eight in grams without applying any material now this was phase one and in phase two we have a different drawing let's just show you that this is the drawing for phase two or part two you can still download it from the same location we have the base geometry changed by changing that 22 degrees between the arm into eight and we have a wall thickness of three here 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 and here so whenever i see this i immediately think of shell because it's a feature that very homogeneously scoop this model out and leave a homogeneous wall thickness throughout the body so let's just see how we can change that first of all let's change that 22 to 8 to be safe all right now without clicking ok that radius also is changed from 22 to 30 so let's change that as well okay 38 degrees and we are good next we have to create the shell with a thickness of three so set it to three and pick this surface it looks good except that fillet over here is causing problems so we don't want to do this let's just delete this shell roll this back up once use shell again now you can roll it down again if it works so the fillet around is still there however we have to have fillet all around this cylinder in the middle and the interior walls of this pocket so let's just do that we have to have fillets of one here here and i can also pick it from behind like this then we had it here all the way here and so on <music> double checking the drawing it looks fine so guys once again i'm gonna go to the evaluate tab pick mass properties you should get a mass of 14.19 grams guys as i promised you there is an announcement at the end of this video when you go to my website you see this banner over here or when you go down to this ultimate course page you will see a field to enter your email what is that for let me tell you we are going to release a new SOLIDWORKS course ultimate from scratch to end. What does it mean? It means if you have no prior experience in SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD software, you can pick this course, start from scratch and build your skills up all the way to the CSWP level where you are prepared for the exam. I am actually putting CSWA and CSWP as modules in this course. So it will take you from zero all the way to professional. If you're interested interested in that put your email here as soon as the course is ready all right guys don't forget to like and subscribe this is ryan i'm signing off and don't forget to sign up the course is coming soon see you next time